When it comes to security, what is credential stuffing? Welcome back to the Hello World Show. I'm Heather Downing. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach, and we are here at NDC Oslo with the great Troy Hunt, <laughs> security consultant, Microsoft Regional Director, MVP, um, and a runner of a website, Have I Been Owned or Have I Been Pwned. Excellent. That was very well put. Thank you. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about how you got into the security game specifically, because that's kind of your, that's kind of the established Troy Hunt specialty. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I did a talk this morning where I was talking about sort of the, the path to my independence and what I do now. And I, I made the point that the first you know, half a dozen or so blog posts I wrote had nothing to do about security. <laughs> and I just sort of found myself drifting in that direction over time, largely in response to seeing a lot of developers in a very large organization really not understanding security very well. And frankly, the internal security people not explaining it very well. And I wanted to kind of, I guess, be that glue in the middle and, and try and put things in terms that the dev folks understood and that kept the security folks happy. So would you find that it's easy to have people go into the security area or is it hard to find prodigies? <laughs> well, that's a good question. I'm not sure that I look for prodigies. I, I think that in terms of people making that transition, uh, if you're working with, within a technology environment to begin with, then you, then you have, I guess, ways of stepping very slightly sideways. And, and as it was for me, my, my corporate role before I went independent a couple of years ago, it was an architecture role. It was much broader than just security. And it was only when I, when I got to go independent that I, I focused predominantly on security. But I had a role where building systems and designing systems, I, I had lots of opportunities to get more involved in the security side of things. And there are many people probably listening to this who have software development roles or administration roles where they can just start to get more involved and more interested and they may find opportunities to drift more in that direction. Do you think that it's an area that is very underserved in terms of education? Do you think that we're missing a big piece of that for developers? Well, if we read the news headlines every day, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. And, and the interesting thing is, is that when you look at all of these incidents that we're seeing, they're almost always due to a human error somewhere, and yeah. very, very prevalently, predominantly, I would say, focused on software flaws. So SQL injection, we just see SQL injection all over the place. And this is not that someone hasn't set up their firewall properly or that they've misconfigured permissions. It is a, a developer sat down and wrote code that had a flaw in it and the developer just simply didn't understand the risk of what they wrote. And, and these are just education problems, right? Uh, but they're also things that we can solve very easily. It doesn't take long to explain to someone exactly how SQL injection works and to get it right. Now, have, have I Been Owned or Have I Been Pwned is, a, is like a fascinating website, not only because is it, it's an excellent service, um, but you talk a, you do a lot of technical talks on the kind of the infrastructure behind mm -hmm. it, which I think is really great. Yeah, it's, it's good fun, and in fact, in that talk this morning, I was saying to people, look, the reason I created the service was not predominantly to have a data breach service, it was because I wanted to build stuff in Azure. And I was like, oh, here's a good idea. I've got you know heaps of data that I've been analyzing for other sort of research purposes. And I said, well, yeah, why don't I take that? And that can be the thing that I used to scratch the itch, was to, which was to build something big on Azure. So I've been very sort of focused on, on how do I choose the right services and build it up. And over time, that's caused me to learn all sorts of things I didn't expect as well. So I, I didn't expect it to be successful. Uh, I thought a few people might use it. And now I, I have days that serve many hundreds of thousands, millions of, uh, of page views, which is an interesting set of problems when you're trying to run it on, on basically no money as well. Well, we're very excited to have you share yes, something with us you. today. <laughs> thanks for coming on. All right. All right, Troy, great to have you. What uh, are you going to show us today? Much. So I thought today we'd talk a little bit about uh, something known as credential stuffing, which is when websites get broken into and passwords and usernames and everything gets leaked out. And then attackers take this data and they, they aggregate it all together from different places and then they try it on other accounts. And you know we, we see this a lot when someone will pop up and they'll go, recently for example, to say, hey, I've got the Spotify database. And everyone's going, hey Troy, this is a Spotify database. What are you talking about? And then I look at the list and we, uh, we talk to Spotify and it, it seems like what's happened is people are just taking them out of other systems, tried it on Spotify and then stuff works. So <laughs> do, do you want me to walk you through this? And we'll, yes, please. We'll, yeah, we'll, absolutely. Um, we'll do something totally non-electronic <laughs> and make it really <laughs> simple. So you, you sort of think of it a little bit like a funnel, right? So imagine that we have 
funnel like this and we've just got all these different websites up here. So think about stuff that we know has been breached and had really major incidents. So you might have something like, uh, you got LinkedIn up there and... Target. Uh, yeah, now, <laughs> see, Target was POS terminals. So mm. you, you've got credit cards yeah. and mag stripes and stuff like that. You don't have credentials. Mm. So when it comes to credential stuffing, you kind of need the first part of that in order to stuff anything. So, uh, you know, LinkedIn was a big one. We had MySpace as well, and MySpace had 360 odd million email addresses and passwords exposed. Very often this stuff has some degree of cryptographic protection, but it's just bad, it's just poorly done. And then for good measure, we might say, all right, look, let's chuck in Last.fm as well. And all this sort of goes into the funnel. And out the other end, you get all of these email address password pairs. So, you know, you have email, password, and it will literally be sort of you know delimited fields and you might have the same email address appear multiple times with different passwords because people use it in different places but imagine now that at the other end of this you get literally hundreds of millions of accounts in a text document and when, when you look at this this is exactly what it is like imagine your email address delimiter and then a password that you have used somewhere before so we get all of this out the other end and then the takers go, okay, well, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a site. I mean, let's imagine we go to Spotify, right? Just as an example, because they've been coming up a little bit lately. And Spotify says, okay, we'll look into your email like so. And there's a field and into your password. Let's just give it a bit of password there. And then, of course, you've got a submit button. It submits. And someone goes, okay, look, let's look at the HTTP or HTTPS request. And we'll have a look at how that's constructed. So, okay, well, we've got a, a field name this and a field name that. Often no anti-automation or anything on a login because you don't want to have a barrier to entry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this data, we're going to combine it with those requests, and then we're just going to automate it and just cycle through this stuff over and over and over again. And then it, it kind of gets worse <laughs> because what they'll do is they'll say, all right, well, what we'll do is we'll use a whole bunch of open proxy services so that we can send this from different IP addresses or we might use a botnet. And we use the botnet because if we do that, then we've got all of these machines around the world, sometimes tens or even hundreds of thousands of machines. And they're working through this list and testing them against something like Spotify. And the curious thing now, sort of from a developer's perspective, is think about you're running a service like Spotify and you're seeing login requests. And they're from different IP addresses and attackers are randomizing user agents and request headers and this sort of stuff. And sometimes some of them fail, sometimes some of them work. How do you differentiate this from legitimate traffic? So good traffic versus legitimate, or good traffic versus bad traffic. How are you gonna know when someone comes along here, particularly with all these different IP addresses? And this is kind of the challenge that we have now. Does Spotify have anything in place to kind of recognize that? Well, I mean, I guess if they're doing it for multiple proxies, it, it comes, a request comes from one IP and a request comes from another, and they can't really they can't really stop those requests by one IP because it's coming from lots of them. Well, this is where it gets challenging, and, and we can almost sort of break this down into two parts and go, okay, well, let's almost put it in two boxes and say there is this one box which is consumed, right? So, what do we? as individuals, and all of us have a heap of passwords these days, what do we do to make sure this doesn't happen to us? And then there's the other side, which is we say, okay, what do the builders do? So many of us, those of us here and, and listen to the podcast, uh, are building systems. So what can we do from that side? Now, from the consumer side, this only works because passwords get reused. Like that is the entire basis for this thing being a thing in the first place. This is the credential stuff. So you start using unique passwords, and particularly if you have a password manager and you're actually generating long, genuinely random strings, then suddenly the equation here changes fundamentally. And of course we have multi-step verification as well, which is just, it just kills this stuff immediately. Now the builder's side is much more challenging because it's, you're basically saying, how do you stop an attacker trying to log in with the victim's legitimate credentials? And this is now really, really hard. So then maybe you have to have context of behavior. Yeah, so context of behavior is one thing. And if, if you have a think about what that looks like. So have you ever, I mean, we're all here in a place that's foreign from home. Yes. If you sign into your Facebook, sometimes it'll come back and say, hey, it looks like you were logging into Facebook at one place. Same thing with my bank. Okay, cool. And you, like, this is a good protection for a bank. <laughs> kind of got your money. Uh, so, you know, something like that is great. So what, what is a behavioral norm? And then what is a deviation from the behavior? 
because what this can't replicate is the way people normally interact with the system. So that's uh, that's certainly one thing that's really neat, uh, and that's we're increasingly seeing that in the larger web assets. In a lot of the smaller stuff, it is just does the email address and password match the one we've got the database, and it's very kind of unsophisticated. So that's certainly part of it, being able to look at what are the behavioural patterns across the entire system rather than just looking at individual accounts as well, or individual IPs. So for example, are we seeing an elevated rate of failed logins? Because if this happens, and it happens with a large amount of data, and there's a genuine uptick in the amount of logins which don't correspond with the amount of organic traffic that you're seeing to the site, you'd say, okay, well, something's going on. Now then, what can you do about it? Well, there's, you know, you could toggle anti-automation across the site and possibly put a stop to this whilst upsetting your users <laughs> as they get presented with captures. There are much more uh, sophisticated mechanisms that are, that are around these days as well. So things that can look at sort of behavioral norms, not just across your web asset, but across much, much larger properties. So stuff like Cloudflare, which can say, hey, across all of the tens of thousands of websites where people actually you know, have their services or have their sites behind our service. Are we seeing requests uh, from particular IPs or particular user agent streams or behaviours which we can maybe protect against your site? And I guess the, the bigger picture here is that all of this starts to get a lot more sophisticated and goes well beyond just matching credentials. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries. It, it is a, a fun and interesting challenge. And never ending. I mean, it's just a, the amount true. of different security things that you tweet about on a daily, weekly basis yeah, from no. different different com companies or different people or different. My favorites are um, when you when you're when you're on a site that they're like giving you advice on how to construct a login, and they and you go in and you say, "Here's why this is terrible," because SQL injection's a thing, right? So, actually, I found out about OWASP from you. So right. yes, yeah. so thank you again for sharing yes, everything thank you. with you. No worries. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Hope you learned something. A big shout out to the sponsor of this episode. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.